being a civil engineer growing up in India, it, it's you're really not given. There were not that many choices in 1950s. Either you go into science or in the medicine or in engineering. Mm -hmm. And most of us uh, with parents uh, looking at say what's going to happen in the future generally would go either into engineering or in medicine. Mm -hmm. And at that time civil engineering construction was a very popular item. Got my uh, bachelor's degree at the University of Michigan. I came there in 1954 and I had only two years of college in India. So I got one year of uh, uh, reprieve. They accepted one year of coursework and it took me three years to finish my bachelor's and then stayed there and finished one year for master's. Where I met Mary Ann, she came from Watertown, New York. Now how, how she managed to come from Watertown, New York to work on a construction site uh, is, is something that was very unusual at that time and it also showed her independence. Yeah. She did her things. <laughs> and we happened to meet each at, at a, well, we knew each other uh, in the office area anyway, and we met and we uh, went around for, I think I met her in February, and we went around for almost six, seven months around there, and then we decided, all right, we're going to get married. But at that time, PhD was, in civil engineering was not common. There's not a lot of research going on. It was just not considered to be a necessity mm -hmm. to have a PhD. But I said, it would really be nice. So she said, if you want to get it, this is the time to do it. Packed everything in the car and got a small U-Haul trailer mm -hmm. and a uh, little baby, three-month-old. We went to University of Texas in Austin. Mm -hmm. I went and rented an apartment. Now, at, at that time, Marianne had asked me, well, after you get your PhD, are you going to be going to teaching and I said no not really I, I want to still their consulting jobs will be available with PhD in the years to come and I believe this is what I would like to do in 1970 you're right in, in May of 1970 uh, with that background for a few years mm -hmm. the tornado came through we spent a lot of time doing uh, damage documentation in Lubbock mm -hmm. because we were on the home base mm -hmm. and we put a report together that uh, instantaneously nationwide than we were expert. But mm -hmm. the funny part of, of that uh, damage documentation, we were doing it and we, our th thinking was they were going to ask meteorologists what was the wind speed in that tornado, what to anticipate. And there were a couple of them who were part of the National Research Council uh, members on that team. They were asking us, you're engineers, the buildings are damaged, can you tell us what was the wind speed that could have mm. caused that kind of damage. So we realized that there was not that much known mm. about the tornadic damage and the difference between tornadic damage and, and hurricane damage by doing cilia. We realized that there was not that much difference. Mm -hmm. And so we determined the damaging mechanism. And at that time the myth was, or the concept was, that the low pressure in the tornado would do, uh, explode the building. And, but we found the same thing in Hurricane Celia uh, in August, and this had occurred in, in May. So right after that we realized that no, the damage is really occurring due to wind and not the pressure change. Then we had a cooperative program with Colorado State University uh, through 1990s uh, for 10 years, which is very unique. They did the wind tunnel test, we did the field work. Uh, then when it was coming to an end, and NSF normally does not fund anything more than 10 years. Mm -hmm. And we know that, and, mm -hmm. and, and so no use expecting that. Mm -hmm. But then we got lucky and we got some funding from Congress through National Institute of Standard Technology for seven years. Mm -hmm. You know, all that has built up into expansion of from just a pure damage documentation mm -hmm. to field testing to atmospheric measurements, uh, to mechanical measurements through computational, and then of course in the year 2003, this is when I retired as a, stepped down as a director and retired as a faculty member, tenured faculty member. Uh, uh, we added wind energy with mm -hmm. uh, Andy Swift mm -hmm. becoming the director. So right now we're, it's a comprehensive, we got uh, NSF funding for graduate programs, so I got, 
-hmm. And so we have PhD in in science and engineering. So things have come kind of built on its own. In the meantime, my wife, Mary Ann, she uh, did a great job for raising kids while I was goofing around uh, <laughs> doing damage documentation, mm -hmm. staying late at attack. Uh, but they went to school here at Christ the King. They got they went all went to different colleges and David has uh, he's an OBGYN, so he's doing well. Uh, Jatin is veterinarian, went to A and M and got his sweat degree and is in Pennsylvania. Anna got her uh, family physician, uh, St. Mary's and uh, University of Houston. And Rajan, the youngest, that you're familiar with, mm -hmm. Ken, he's the, he is, uh, started civil engineering because his dad was civil engineer. Then he ran into trouble with dynamics. <laughs> and so he switched to microbiology, got his degree in microbiology, and then he finished his uh, master's degree here at Tech, and now he's independent mm -hmm. in uh, Dallas area with his own company. Uh, three people now he's mm -hmm. got and, and expanding, so he's doing well. So the kids have done well, and Mary Ann Besser Hartwig, she had lung cancer in 2005 and 2007. She passed away, but uh, life changes. Mm -hmm. But I, the ASC was kind enough to give me uh, distinguished or honor member mm -hmm. and uh, uh, National Academy of Engineering selected me for uh, as a member in 2003. So what can I say? The life has been great uh, at home and uh, professionally. And uh, there is no other country that you can come from nowhere and be able to do what you like to do and be recognized. I don't believe there's another country in the world that can do that. That's a wonderful way to wind this up, Kishore. Thank you so much for taking the time to share with us today. And uh, again, we, we, we honor you for the, for the hard work and success that you've had. Thank you. Well, I appreciate it. A lot of people have helped me along the way. Thank you. Okay. I didn't realize I talked that long. Oh, well, you're doing fine.